how appropriate that the 199th round for the Sim Racer Coin NASA Rally Cross Challenge is in the same country as the first round in Croft so many years ago. NASA and Nitro Circus continue the partnership that was forged earlier this year as we bring you lights to flag coverage of round three of the 2021 C Sim Racer Coin NASA Rally Cross Challenge, the Brands Hatch Four Hour Marshall Memorial by iDrive Sim Training. As Josh, I am Josh Mertz. Alongside me, it is the uh, original trifecta here. We have Dylan Livingood, four-time champion, and Cody Erdman, two-time champion in the commentary cube, and Zach Johnson, privateer champion as well, in the production truck tonight. As our broadcast and series brought to you by Sim Racer Coin, the cryptocurrency made by Sim Racers for Sim Racers, and our 20 Sim Racers will race to own the winner's coin tonight. You can check out their mission, platform, and vision at simracercoin.org. I'm going to skim through about the top five of the championship in the Drivers' Championship, and I know we don't have a graphic, so that's why we won't say all of it. But Luke Krauss, defending champion, holds the red plate coming into today's race in the United Kingdom, 57 points, ahead of his teammate Josh Clogg with 48. Christian Lindo, 44 points. He was penalized from his antics last week in Norway. He is not here. Sabian Ragster, 42 points. Jacob Harberts with 40. As the Manufacturers' Championship, pre powered by Majors Garage, the setup shop for iRacing. Check them out as well. And we look at Subaru, 63 points ahead of Volkswagen with 42, and Ford has 27. So the Japanese manufacturer continuing the dominance in this championship. The Constructors' Championship, presented by Ferris Shifters. Shift your way to the top, facebook.com slash Ferris Shifters. And it's fiercely forward, six points ahead of Spark Last Lap Motorsports. And then it's a huge gap down to Dirt Esport, 41 points behind Fiercely Forward. So, a couple more sponsors that we have before we get rolling. It's the KES Industries Sportsman Cup. Keep them spinning industries, adaptive controls for sim racing. Uh, thank you to Mario Bonfante Jr. for all of his support, kesindustries.com. That Sportsman Cup is being led by Parker Fl As Ray Kingsbury moves me out of the commentary box in the middle of my intro. Thank you, Ray. The uh, Sportsman Cup is tied. Parker Fleming and Andrew Howell with 21 points, if this graphic is correct. As um, they're all leaving this session, I think. So I'm going to let you guys uh, have a little chat while Ray Kingsbury decides to uh, talk to me. So uh, hello, Dylan. Hello, Cody. And give me a moment. Hi. Well, hello there. As we are here in beautiful Brands Hatch, this should be our third time here on the iRacing I Sim here. So we're about to start qualifying, so let's kind of let these guys run a little bit and figure out... Well, actually, no. I believe we are changing sessions, to be honest, because I think someone showed up late. I believe. Alrighty then, well, that is unfortunate. I do look forward to tonight's racing, though. This is a pretty cool little track that we have here. Yeah, it's it's been putting on some pretty good shows the last two seasons we've had it. It's I cannot. I think I know Bo Albert won the first time. Bo here. Albert won. I think I think Connor won or Sindre won the last it time. Was I have the spreadsheet up here. Yeah, it's one of the two. I remember Bo winning because that was the season I ran, and that's it's a fun track. It's it's technical in places. And you just got to hit the lines Let's just see. perfectly Brands right. Hatch. Yeah, it's one of those where you're really not, you're, you're not. Last two rounds, in the first two rounds, I should say, here in Brands Hatch. Apologies for the uh, little bit of a hiccup here as we are joining into a new session. Uh, someone confirmed at the last moment, so they have to change that up a little bit. But uh Dylan Livingood, four-time champion, 13-time race winner. Cody Erdman, two-time champion and 19, 18-time race winner. So fifth and fourth on the all-time wins list. Um, I really hate saying my stats because I feel like I'm stroking my own ego with 40 wins, six championships. So you're in good company um, for tonight's show. As the Brands Hatch circuit, like was probably being mentioned while I was uh, roasting Mr. Ray Kingsbury. It's very tricky. Um, it's honestly, the front straightaway is a lot like a street circuit because you don't have a lot of room. There's not really that much runoff. And then it is a 90 degree left-hand corner because you don't take the normal turn one. 
Then it's down the hill through a left-right chicane, which is also tricky because the curbs, think of Indianapolis for the NASCAR uh, race that was just there. If you hit it wrong, you're flying. The hairpin up the hill in turn number two. That is dirt over asphalt, so that could get worn through very easily over the stadium super truck style jump up the hill to the left-hand corner. That corner as well, Cody, um, midway through the lap, a little tricky because the racing line kind of falls away. The dirt's there and the, the asphalt's there, but then you have to drive through grass. Yeah, it's a really, and then also going up that hill, it turns into like a street circuit again where it gets funneled down where you have walls on both sides. And then also learning from kind of the faster guys that in, at first you're able to flick it going in the corner, but then once you start getting the dirt worn away, you can start ripping the e-brake a little bit going into there to help rotate the car, and then you get a good drive down back onto the pavement and down the back straightaway. As a couple of our uh, partners that I did not mention, were uh, I drive sim training, drive safe, arrive safe, I drive sim training.com.au as they are the presenting sponsor of all of our rounds uh, in NASA Rallycross. And also DNF Auto Care, your friendly Landsboro mechanic, DNF Auto Care.com.au for all of our Australian viewers and drivers if you need some uh, work done to your vehicle. As I feel bad as I did not do any research before I just started this show. So we're going to look at the presenting sponsor of this race today. And I think it is due to the marshals that were taken from us from Brands Hatch. Yes, it is. So we did lose a marshal, Rob Foote, on the 31st of July. So our thoughts with him and uh, that cause is... Um, bringing him money, bringing his family uh, money. So we're uh, proud to have that as a presenting uh, partner here today. New session is up, by the way. As the session is up, we're going to jump on in here. And I have to ask, um, obviously, we haven't seen cars driving around at all yet. But uh, how, what, what's your prediction? How do you think this is going to go? Well, if it's any indication of... The last two weeks, probably the heat race will be nice and calm. We we haven't again. We haven't ran this race with damage at all. So turn one may be different than what we're used to seeing. But if any indication, damage hasn't mattered the last two weeks, especially in the finals. Everyone's it's been true. everyone's been full out trying to get the win, knowing that it is kind of an open race. I think. Luke Krause at the moment is kind of our favorite at the moment, but he's not without of reach, I would say. it's. I think he's he's a strong car, but one little mistake will put him second or third, and we could see someone like Magnus last week make the podium after having a great start. As session is up, I'm joining in, and I'll be able to talk about cars going around in circles on dirt and asphalt. Mr. Dylan Livingood, it's great to have you with us as well. You were here on uh, Nitro Circus Twitch, powered by the Automotive Sports Network Wednesday, when I decided it was a great idea to put uh, Victor Aldrich into the into the grass. So, I don't think you've seen this track, um, but you have, of course, raced in Great Britain. Uh, wh where am I going with that? No idea, but I, I want to ask you, from what you're seeing of this track so far, what do you think? Uh, like I was telling Cody when we were switching uh, sessions over and we were waiting for you, is uh, I just it's cool how technical this track is. You're never really straight at all um, going around this racetrack. So it's, it's technical for the drivers and it's really racy. And Brands Hatch has always been one of my favorite tracks in, in other games. As we'll notice on the graphic there, Red Plate, Luke Krause, defending champion and the points leader as we get ready through this practice session here. Be sure to join the conversation, hashtag NASA on Nitro, hashtag ASNTVUSA if you're either here on Nitro Circus Twitch or if you are on the Automotive Sports Network on demand. 10 and three quarter minutes left of practice. Probably we're gonna kick that forward just so we can get this rolling here, but uh, we'll have to see how that goes. But. If we stay on board here, I'm trying to figure out who we're on board with. I apologize. It's one of the 
That's Harbert's, actually. Yeah, I was saying, I believe it's I, Harbert's. I thought we were going to stay on board, but he decided to throw it into the sand, so I was going to narrate a lap, but it's okay. As we're riding on board, 33 of Daniel H. Up the hill, like Cody was saying, down the hill, left and right, no curbs, but the walls are right there, and we've seen so much calamity on this straightaway. I think it was Sindre Silva and Connor Parisi last season. The Joker, very bumpy on the entry. So, you almost, that's, I guess, where I was getting at. It's a lot like Croft in the final corner. It's so bumpy, you have to find a line to fly over the bumps to get through the corner right. Yeah, that whole section, that, and the, even the pave, like, the pavement's rough, and then the dirt's even, yeah, because it's got, it's got, like, it doesn't have, like, full-on jumps. It has more, like, rollers to it, and just, it'll totally upset the car if you don't hit them right as we're kind of going through here. Like, there's, you have the initial one, and then all of a sudden it just kind of skips you around here, coming through it. So but you kind of have to find the right line to get through it. That's a lot like the final corner at Croft, though, because yeah. you remember, there's a bump, there, there was a jump, and full disclosure, fourth wall breaking, I designed that track to be terrible. Um, so, it was basically a jump, and then there was a couple bumps, and you really just have to get the car to rotate in the air, it sounds crazy, but it's doable and get through that corner because obviously the joker super important because if you get it wrong you're going to lose a bunch of time you get it right you're going to gain some time over the jump landing right on the dirt and that's a that's a weird transition too because if you overshoot the jump somehow you might land on the asphalt and given the damage these cars do get damaged when they land oh yeah if you land wrong it'll Get you give you damage and like, then if you let possibly you'll land wrong and if you're next to someone you'll slide into them and that'll give you tight that'll give you wheel damage if you hit them hard enough so it's you're with the damage you kind of have to play it smart especially over the jumps yeah and that yeah. we kind of found that to be the case when we were running in r as well you hit the jump wrong and you'll get a bunch of damage that's why for the longest time we didn't run damage but uh then we i think we figured out how to do it if i'm not mistaken yeah, we figured out how to make it to where it was less of an effect. And also, in NR, we were sending them multiple stories. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's... <laughs> that's also go big or go home. <laughs> Matt Hartley, boys, is two tenths up on Jacob Harberts, who is tied with Jason Hook. And I know we've mentioned that the last couple weeks. Without Sindre, without Connor, without Bo Albert, without the pros... There really isn't a guaranteed, I'm going to win this race by a mile. I mean, we kind of had that with uh, Rafos and Lindo last week. But without them, this is going to be blown wide open. Top four within two tenths. Yeah, like like I was pretty much saying a little bit earlier ago. Like, yeah, we have Luke Krause, who's our defending champion. That's uh, is, We obviously know, obviously with having a title, he's talented. So he's going to be kind of our favorite. But any one mistake on the start and it's wide open to the entire field as we begin qualifying here in great britain they're going to get three laps to figure out who's going to be on pole position as we're going to take a look at the format hopefully we have that graphic as well that's one thing that we did not take a look at in the opener we will have three heat races at least i think depending on the format we only have 21 cars so we'll have to play it by ear on that one uh, up to 11 cars in each six laps joker lap once and the top two will advance so then we get the semi-final races two races each or sorry two groups up to 13 cars in each clearly we're not going to have that much that many cars tonight eight laps joker twice the top three will advance so then it will give us 10 laps 12 cars and two jokers here in great britain and the the pessimist in me wants to say, yeah, this sucks. We only have 20 cars, but boys, we raced with six for so many years. Yeah, and it's definitely all about quantity or quality over quantity. That's really what all this league has been about. So a little bit smaller car count. It's going to make it feel a little bit, um, a little bit more cozy on the track, I suppose. Yeah, does this also give the kind of the guys that are like, Parker Fleming and guys that have been right on the outside looking in to the last two weeks of the final or the of looking of getting into the final guys like that that now that with a smaller car count they have a better chance of making it and showing what they can do in a final 
as we take a look at our defending champion and our points leader, Luke Krause in car number one. Over the jump, great camera placement there. As I'm taking a look to see if anybody's going to be finishing their laps. Then we're going to look at Andrew Howell being the first car to finish his lap, 56.330. Matt Kingsbury, way down the order if that graphic is correct. Uh, Harvard beats Howell, 55.8. Clog comes across at a 56 flat. A lot of these guys, I think, using the first lap, getting warmed up because a lot of these times are lower than I expected. Yeah, this track is very much a, like kind of a rhythm track. You got to get in your rhythm of because there isn't a lot of like good marks to use to turn in and use the brakes and everything. So you kind of need to get As in that Robichaux. rhythm. Let's go into the wall and that's a big deal let me try and find him on my monitor that's a big deal because he was on his second lap and i don't think he's gonna get that third lap in not only time but i don't know if that's gonna claim his, as his third lap it is when he resets to the pit lane so i yeah, think rover show unfortunately will not get a lap time in as i Hanging out here also in the Twitch chat while we're on our qualifying quick. Uh, Trevor Teal subscribed to Tier 1 for 18 months, so, and he's hanging out in the grandstands tonight. So thank you, Trevor Teal, for hanging out with us. As uh, we do not have uh, Petey Vegos tonight, I'm not sure where he is. So, uh, Cody, you're doing a little bit of double duty uh, for Twitch chat here today. And Luke Kraus has gone fastest of all, 55.269 for the defending champion, or fiercely forward. But Robbie Lorill, 55.348 for DNF Auto Care. He is trying to make it to the front of the field. We have Adam Thomas, first time winner at Crandon last season, along with Schofield and Harbert's the top five. That's an interesting top five, boys. Yeah, I, I saw Robbie, he was quick in practice too, so this track really must kind of fit his driving style the best and adam thomas when i drove with matt kingsbury and Savin ragster he was wicked fast here and that was his first night out ever racing here at nasa so with him being turning into more of the series uh series veteran he's really getting a handle of the beetle around this place as our lap times pretty much over and done with we're looking at one of the beetles James Watson in the 39. He has one lap left, but I don't think he's going to get it. Well, I thought he was parking it, but I think he's going to be finishing this up. And Robichaud did clock a lap time. I thought he wasn't going to. A 59.871. It's better than not running a lap, but he unfortunately is way down the order. As Matt Hartley, the only car to not qualify, he was penalized from his antics last week in Norway. Uh, he did get penalized with that contact with Jacob Rafos. Uh, Rafos was actually banned for a couple of weeks due to his antics last week. Uh, his intentional wreck on, I think his, he is his cousin, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, Christian Lindo. So, um, I will hold my tongue on that, but, uh, we are going to get ready to go green for heat one. As we're sitting here on the front straightaway, gridding up, how's, just, how's Twitch chat's rolling in? We got some more people, I know some numbers going up here, so as we get ready for Heat 1, so looking forward to getting back going here in Brands Hatch. Kraus, Schofield, Oakenhaug, both Kingsbury's, Parker Fleming, and Justin Robichaux for this first heat race in Great Britain. Technically, this track only has six turns according to the graphic on iRacing, so that's going to be interesting as we get ready to go green. We await our championship leader, Luke Kraus, in the best possible position that he could be on pole position for heat number one he won seating and he has to get through this six lap race to be on pole position i would almost say i want to be on the outside because if you get a better start you can swoop past with that better line through the corner but we know how tricky turn one is here yeah sometimes the outside can be it can be a blessing or a curse you can rip around the top like josh barry in the xfinity race or you can get caught up in some mess where everyone pushes out india so as we're about to go green here we get ready the first seven cars are about to roll here in heat number one here in great britain kraus schofield oakenhow kingsbury kingsbury fleming robichaux green flag schofield misses the start compared to kraus down to turn one it was three wide with oakenhow kingsbury and schofield 
Kraus is gonna lead. Schofield bumps Matt out wide, pushes Matt into the wall, and Kingsbury's in the wall next to his brother, side by side. And Schofield's gonna get hit by Matt. Matt's gonna turn him in the 21. And I talked to Matt earlier in the week, and he said he's not gonna be rubbed around like that and pushed around. So clearly already Matt Kingsbury not playing nice. Luke Kraus ahead of Magnus Oakenhaug, Matt Kingsbury, Ray Kingsbury, Fleming and Robichaux as Schofield bringing up the rear. I remember what's, ha what's happened a couple of times with Matt and Ray racing together, especially in a heat race. They tend to find each other like they have here on the start. So it's hopefully they some brotherly love and they play nice here as Ray goes into the Joker. Incident in the back between Robichaux and uh, I believe Parker Fleming. And that is Fleming as they got together. Look, well, it looks like I'm taking a pick, uh, peek off monitor. Fleming hit the wall in the same spot that Robichaux did and they both came together. At the end of the first lap, Luke Kraus leads ahead of Magnus Okenhaug. So Canadian and Norwegian in the top two spots. And then we have two Connecticut natives in third and fourth. So we're taking a look. I'm taking a look at least at Schofield in the back. He is trying so hard to get back up to those positions. You'll notice on the left, on the right hand side of that ticker, uh, our graphic has been fixed on the Joker counter. So you can follow along. Uh, apparently that joker says that graphic says two jokers, but they only take one. We'll see here in uh, just a minute if it's working. Welcome to Nitro Circus Twitch powered by ASN. It, it kind of works sometimes. Matt Kingsbury jokers in the 21. I think he will come out ahead of his brother, but he's very slow, guys, exiting the joker, or rather in the joker, but he still comes out ahead of his brother. Yes, he had a pretty good lap there going into the, the joker, so he's got a good, we're looking at about two second advantage, second and a half, roughly. And to update uh, Zach Johnson, who is on text chat in Discord, yes, that graphic is working. So that's uh, good that we have that one. We're coming across flags here in heat number one. Luke Kraus still leads. Dylan, I'm going to put you on the spot. Is there anything you're noticing with these guys early on? Uh, you know, a lot of these guys getting strung out, kind of minding their own P's and Q's. It's uh, kind of what I'm seeing here. As Oakenhaug sits in second. Running order has not changed. I think the only real big thing here, I mean, maybe Matt going a little bit aggressive in turn two might have sealed this heat race up. Granted, we're gonna have three laps to go and we've seen crazier things happen, but Robichaux and Fleming having issues, Schofield having issues, and the other cars strung out. It's a good I've, test session for these guys. Yeah, it is. I was also looking, I'm kind of watching, Magnus running a 58 to a Matt Kingsbury 56. So he is, really on a charge and also if you look up on the scoreboard here magnus still has the joker and this joker is i believe longer even though it's on the inside because of the dirt so if matt reels him in close enough he could overtake him to make it into the final as i'm taking a look at, at the graphic here the rotation with matt he ran a 57.996 for his joker lap 56.353 for that regular lap he is hauling the mail in car number 21 so light a fire under that Volkswagen Beetle. As his brother Ray actually was two tenths faster than that last lap too. So the two Kingsbury brothers are trying to make it into that final transfer spot, pushing as hard as they can. Two laps to go for defending champion Kraus, who jokers in car number one, 56.811 compared to 56.449. Matt Kingsbury runs a 0.2. Ray runs a zero. So the transfer spot getting really spicy, and I think I'm in agreement with you, Cody. We can basically write Magnus out of this transfer spot. And where have we seen this before? Oh, right. It was Charlotte when the brothers came together. Yeah. And also, going into turn one, I think Magnus overshot it a little bit, missed his apex. So I think Matt was able to reel in a bit more time. So if Matt, Matt can keep just hitting his marks and chasing them down, and with Magnus waiting on his Joker, that's that rabbit's just sitting out there. As, as I speak it, here goes Magnus into the Joker, so we're going to find out. As the Norwegian Jokers in car number 26, we take a look from high above to see the rotation. Exiting the Joker, Kingsbury gets him easily over Oakenhaug as he takes the white flag. He's going to be put in the transfer spot. Miles ahead is Luke Kraus in car number one. We forget about that. But we look at this battle for the transfer spot and Ray Kingsbury stuck behind his teammate in the quest to catch his brother. But Magnus isn't out of this either. I thought Magnus was going to be farther back. 
as Magnus is raised on the worst spot to be in, if Magnus pushes too hard and kind of gets into Matt, he'll be able to kind of pounce on both of them. So let's see if he's able to do anything. Matt, a this little is bit why I like on no entry. This is why I like there's no team orders. As I remember why those were banned, and it's uh, maybe us too. Uh, Luke Krause is going to win. Normally, I would call that a super big deal, but this is the battle. Magnus Ooh. nudges Matt, exiting the final corner. It's going to be a drag race, but Magnus is going to get the better run. Matt, Matt's going to block. Here comes Ray. It's going to be three wide at the line nearly, but Matt, he got it. I think he got it for the transfer. He did by um, three hundredths of a second. And Dylan Livingood finally here for a photo finish. That's the third one over nine years. That's incredible. As Kraus, Matt Kingsbury, Oakenhaug, Ray Kingsbury. We look at Parker Fleming in the 434. He is our final car to make it home in heat number one. But Luke Kraus, right where he needs to be. Uh, defending champion, points leader, pole position for the uh, British round here at Brands Hatch. Des, he put on an amazing show as we, I wouldn't say come to expect, but we know with that being the championship, he's trying to prove that it wasn't a fluke that he can go back to back. So let's see what he's able to do here being locked into the final as we got more people rolling in to the Twitch chat. So everyone come say, hey, tell us where you're from. We are just hit that 20, the 20 viewer mark. So see if we can get up even higher. As yeah, and drop the name of your sports. favorite person in chat as well. It looks like we got a couple of Robichaux fans. As Robichaux uh, made that move on Parker Fleming, unfortunately came together with him. As luckily uh, to the Twitch chat, we have two more heats, two semifinals, and a feature race still left to go here on the menu for tonight. Green flag for Heat 2. Lorill gets a good start for the first phase. Harbert's going to beat him in the second phase, but they're still going to be side by side down to turn number one. Cryer Howell, Ace Simone, and Aldrich. As running wide was Lorill, checked Harbert's in turn number one through the chicane. Cryer's going to hit Howell in the triple six. Howell comes out in front of Daniel Ace, so the teammates come together, and Aldrich gets into the 33. Way out wide is Lorill in the 213. Opening the door was um, Harbert's for Cryer, but he closed it, exiting turn two. Off the jump, up the hill once again. Robbie Lorill sliding it through turn th uh, turn four. And Jacob Harberts holds the transfer after getting checked by Lorill. That was an aggressive move. Something that I might have done once or twice to one of you guys, but it made Lorill way out front. As Andrew Howell here goes into the Joker, so he's the first one to Joker in the field. Visiting the Joker in the triple six. Don't want to get a commitment violation as I think hitting those barriers is classified as one. At the end of the first lap, the real leads over Harberts, Cryer, Aish, Aldrich, Howell, and Nick Simone. So the two team Watson Beatles at the back of the field. Yeah, and definitely a lot cleaner start than last race. As Howell over the curbs and around in turn three. So we take the triple six out of it. And I'm going to be interested to see if Harberts can keep up with the Larill. Uh, infamously, we know that Larill practices at 2:30 in the morning, just at any point in time that he wants. So uh, he has has the uh, tenacity to do that. So 59.447. It does. He mess he messages the Discord at like 3:41 and 30 seconds in the morning that he's practicing, and I don't understand it. You know, and I think that's kind of what separates these drivers from some of the drivers of the past is these guys nowadays, they eat, sleep and breathe rally cross. As I was actually thinking about that, I think honestly, not to uh, to make us get on the rock rocking chairs here, but we didn't practice. It was a running meme that you show up and then you practice as around is one of the Beatles. It's Victor Aldrich. Um, Harberts is off in turn three, keeps the spot over Cryer. Uh, but real quick, the running meme of NASA was originally you don't know what track you're, you're at until it's race day, until it is 8 o'clock and practice starts. But these guys know what tracks, and of course, they have open practice. So you have all that time that you can dedicate to getting faster. That and there's also all the the pro guys out there that, have, that eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. So then working with guys like that just even 
boosts uh, performance even more. So having that kind of in your pocket and then, yeah, just being able to run thousands on thousands of laps on these tracks and know every single inch where there's grip at one point of the race to the second point of the race. It's, I know guys all over, even the NASCAR side, the whole iRacing service guys are like that where they practice thousands of laps to do their profession. Yeah, it's, it's almost amazing to like... See... Go ahead, Dylan. Sorry. It, it's amazing to see how the talent trickles down, too, from the top. Uh, you get guys like, you know, Matt and Ray Kingsbury. I know if I ever were to hop back into a car again, they would definitely be the first people to help. Um, and it just trickles on down, down, and it makes people better. As really quickly, I looked. Uh, Robbie LaRoe Joker's in the 213. If, if I can, we're going to bring him back onto a camera here once he's going through turn three. He was running a line that I would deep, deep, late apex off the road on exit, but that late allowed him to carry so much speed through turn three. I, I was amazed. I've noticed that with him and Harbert, they so they slide all the way out to where the gravel trap would be in the. Let's keep like, an eye. If we can take a look, maybe course. on board here. Deep yeah. into the corner, apexing first, and then way into the dirt. That's legal. The, the three yeah. wheels off is a rule for me. Thank you. You're welcome, Dylan Living Good. Mm -hmm. um, but that that line is so unique. I, I was noticing that earlier. Yeah, I at first I thought he was just missing the corner. But then him, and I know it's even Harvard started doing it, where they, they almost use that gravel trap kind of like a, a cushion. As a cushion, like a dirt track. No, but like I know they're on dirt, but like he, like how no, the, it, sp the sprint car guys do, where they they'll slide out, they'll hit the cushion, they'll go. So I'm guessing that gravel's got a bit more grip to kind of bounce into, so then they can rotate the car and get that nice drive drive off as we get the white flag here. But what's nice, remember, and again breaking the fourth wall, this dirt is on asphalt, so this dirt is going to move, it's going to be worn away, everything like that. But that gravel scanned on the track. That gravel's not moving. So that would make sense that you slide through the corner, you don't know what grip you're getting, but then you hit that ass, you hit that gravel, and you know that that's what grip you're getting every single lap. And you can almost actually see it where he's worn in a section of the track there as his own groove up there, as a couple guys have also used it. So it's he's clearing it out, so it actually may grip up even more on exit. So we're coming to the checkered flag of heat number two, and we've been so amazed at the driving throughout the race. Harbert's Jokers in the 80, into the wall goes the American, so does Cryer and so does Ace, so everybody Jokers, there's no rotation really. Lorill's gonna win heat two. Harbert's is gonna come out of the Joker, miles ahead of Cryer, he will transfer in car number 80. As Bodie Cryer, Daniel Ace, Andrew Howell, and uh, Victor Aldrich and Nick Simone will be our running order through heat two. As we're... As, yeah, Robbie Lurill getting a couple shoutouts here in the Twitch chat. Yeah, he put on a great race, and yeah, that was that's a line that I haven't seen from even the progress. So I don't know if that's something new or something that only can be done in the Subaru. I'm not sure. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that once we get later here in the race. And there's one person that's I would think if you had to pick most improved on pace, it is Robbie Lurill because I remember. Indeed. And no offense to him, he was terrible. But then he practiced all the time, and now he's up front at the front of the field. He will be the second seed for the British round here at Brands Hatch. So our third heat race, Adam Thomas, Josh Clogg, Jason Hook, Kieran Forrest, uh, Drake Burgoon, James Watson, and former champion in 2020A, Matt Hartley. Really weird to say that we only have... One champion on the grid, if I'm not mistaken. As we get ready for this heat race, green flag. Thomas gets a good jump over Clog down to turn number one. Hook has nowhere to go in the 137, backs off. Forrest does as well in the 44, into turn one. The winner from Crandon runs it out wide in the 625. That's Adam Thomas through the chicane, single file. Hook nearly gets into Clog in the 199. Forrest to the inside of Hook in the one in the 44 against the 137 and down to the corner. Let's see if the Volkswagen runs the line. He does not. The Ford does not run the line. Granted, we're one lap in, half a lap in. We'll have to see what uh, transpires here throughout this heat race. Thomas still leads. Impressed with speed with him as well. Hooked to the inside of Forrest and Burgoon running it wide in turn four. As I'm wondering if they'll wait to do that line with no one 
being around them because it does open up the door completely to get on the inside and get pushed wide. So maybe that's just a line you want to run that gives good lap times, but also opens up the door for being overtaken. At the end of the first lap, Adam Thomas leads. The winner from uh, Crandon last season ahead of Josh Clogg in the 199 for Fiercely Forward. Kieran Forrest, Big Dog Forrest, sits in third in the 44. Jason Hook, Matt Hartley, Watson, and Burgoon. As I'm taking a look at this list, and Hartley is the only champion. I never thought that I'd see the day that we only have one champion in this race racing but it is only hartley ah well are you saying the he race or the whole race the whole race i just looked at the grid unless what i'm a, mistaken what about your defending champion luke kraus oh shut up i'm blind <laughs> <laughs> welcome to nasa i'm blind yep, yep. so we have two <laughs> and we yeah. let you do our stats <laughs> Yeah, I do. I have a super big stat book, too. Who knows if that's wrong or not? You might want to yeah. use it. And and both of our point standings have been messed up for the other two series. Shut up. I hate you. And it's been against me, too, of all things. It's been my team that you've been affecting. I hate you. <laughs> Shut up. Some days. It's Adam Thomas. Meanwhile, aside from the meme image here, Clog trying to close the or get the gap closed on Thomas. Thomas ran it wide. I think he's running that normal line if I'm not mistaken, but Clog two tenths up that last lap here, guys. So it's getting a little dicey up front. As yeah, these top two have just separated a little bit. They got about two and a half seconds over Kieran Forrest. So these two kind of checking themselves out as Adam runs a little bit wide here, but then he gets a really good run off the corner. So and also the track is wearing in, so these short wheelbase cars with the Beetle and the Ford should be kind of catching up here to, as we saw what Matt was able to do in that last one. As we take three laps to go, crossed flags so far in heat number three, the first round of racing almost done for the evening, and then we have the semifinals. Clog clobbers the curbs in turn three. And it looks as though, no, both of them didn't run that line. That's interesting to see. Uh, that could be something that uh, Robbie found just in practice, in that, in those 3 a.m. practices when nobody's on, that is kind of his little speed secret. I guess that is true. He does practice by himself a lot. So who knows? He might have found that and nobody's seen it until now. As... I don't know why Hook is placed up front. Hook has parked it in the 137. So uh, looks as though, did he take two jokers? Unless that graphic's wrong, he did, and he parked it in the 137. So unfortunately, Jason Hook out of heat number three. As remember, you only take one joker in the in the uh, first round of heat races. The semifinals, you take two. In the feature, you take two. Dylan, again on the spot, and I know you don't have an answer, but uh, describe to our new viewers, why the hell do we take two jokers in NASA Rallycross? Uh, just because we wanted to be different. Um, just to add more strategy, basically, to it. Uh, you, you know, it gives it a, another variable um, for just one more time. Just adds to the excitement. I remember the second joker has won and lost me many races, and it's won and lost, I think, everyone a bunch of races uh, here. So remember, yeah. As we come to the white flag, remember, thank you for joining us here on Nitro Circus Twitch. We look at Drake Burgoon shoving out one of the Volkswagens. It was Burgoon into Watson. As we take the white flag for Adam Thomas, Josh Mertz, Cody Urban, Dylan Livingood, uh, numerous championships and wins represented. So uh, the MRT retirement home originally, now it's just the NASA retirement home. Thomas, I am very impressed with him today. It, when he's when he's got the speed, he's really quick, and he's very poised for being a newer driver to the series. I know he's going on his third season now, but like he's he doesn't crack under the pressure because he's just hitting his lines perfect every time, trying to get this heat win. As it looks like Hartley has gotten past Forrest for the third position, but unfortunately, third does not matter. In the heat races, Thomas Jokers in the 625. Will we see a rotation here? Coming to the checkered flag, yes! Clogged to the lead. Thomas will have to settle for second, but that's crucial because it's outside or inside versus outside for the feature, if I'm not mistaken. 
I believe so. As uh, we'll bring in uh, Twitch chat again, Cody, if you want to give us a quick update before the first semifinal. Yeah, as we got uh, we got more people rolling in. We're almost hitting the 20, 25 year mark. As uh, Greco, he's apparently he's hanging out in the turn one grandstands. I out of curiosity, I asked how the food prices were out there. I guess a little bit expensive. So we'll have to talk to Brands Hatch next time we show. He up. did get a pretzel German style. Though. Yeah, he did. So I don't know if it, I don't know if it was just because it was a German thing. Washing it down with the twelve dollar beer. Yeah, probably. So we get ready for the first semi-final. It's another seven-car race, but this is going to be an eight-lap race, and you have to take the Joker twice. And this is the race where three cars advance out of this race. Oakenhaug, Hartley, Ace, Schofield, Burgoon, Aldrich, and Parker Fleming. Oh, hey, John. Oh, we're going racing. Green flag, I'll let you talk in just a minute, but Hartley on the outside of Oakenhow, 2020A rivals all over again, down to turn number one, Hartley's going to back up the corner, will he sneak to the inside of his former title rival? He does, to undercut the Norwegian through the chicane of turns three, two and three, Oakenhow very slow through the corner, dare I say it, he was backing up his title rival from that season. Down to turn four. Connection issues for Hartley. Pushes out wide. A sneaks to the inside of his former teammate for Motorless Motorsport. As they're both technically on the same team now. Satellite teams at least. Schofield squirrely off the jump in the 27. Up, up the hill, down the hill. Oakenhaug still leads over Hartley and Aish. Schofield, Fleming, Burgoon, and Aldrich. Cody, what were you saying? Uh, it'll, it was just a Twitch chat question for you. We'll... We'll have it answered once when we're in between semifinals here. No, Victor, I don't have any phone recommendations. I'm off work. Leave me alone. Magnus Oakenhaug leads at the end of the first lap ahead of Daniel Aish as Hartley Jokers takes his first bit of strategy here in Brands Hatch. Parker Fleming sneaks his way to fourth, but he has not taken a Joker. I think Schofield has. And along with Aldrich in the 98. Aldrich did not. I apologize there. Fleming was ahead of him. Uh, Hartley and Schofield are, and Burgoon were the three that have taken Joker so far. So Oakenhaug, Aish, and Hartley. Hartley's in a good spot after taking his first Joker because you want to fly through that dirt, over the jumps, get out of the Joker and hold your spot, and then claw your way back. And we have beaten this dead horse so many times, gentlemen, but you Joker early on a longer track, that way you can claw the gap back. Think St. Eustache, the shorter Joker. Think of maybe the original Charlotte. Jokering was Oakenhaug in the 26 and H. So running order back to normal. Yeah, and this Ooh. may come down to strategy, and dare I say it, Josh, because, I mean, these guys are a lot cleaner and a lot more organized, a lot more to on top of each other after the first lap. Is Very tidy. As H pushed out... Parker Fleming wide, and then Schofield was able to capitalize on that because Parker was out in the grass. So I was going to say uh, neat and tidy for the race lead, but then they came together for third through, looks like sixth. Basically, everybody else. Yeah. Over the jump. Oakenhaug and Hartley. Hartley dives it in once again on the 26. Can't get the traction off the dirt, though, which is interesting. But they're in the same car, but of course the setups are going to be different. Let's see what will happen here on lap three. Hartley's going to finish his strategy. That, honestly, is a very good move, and I know you guys are going to relate to this. You get the clear track, and especially with the longer lap, he's just going to see him, and he knows he can catch him. Yeah, that's going to be key. Aish with the run on the asphalt, peeking to the inside. He thought better of it. He's going to let his teammate have the line uh, once again. The DGRX crew splitting up into three or four teams, DNF Auto Care, Ferris Shifters, iDrive Sim, and um, I'm missing one of them, but still a lot of cars for them, and they are going to be satellite operations, essentially. So Aish not fighting his teammate there. As but Aish does get nudged by oops. Schofield in the 27. As uh, Harley going through the chicane, he did wash the nose, so Aish was able to catch up to him, so... Let's kind of keep an eye on that. Hopefully he doesn't make that mistake again. Otherwise, Aish may be able to get around him. We're going to come across flags in semifinal A. Oakenhaug's going to immediately cover Hartley. So this strategy is going to be done for the top two. If we take a look from high above, exiting the corner, Hartley ahead of Oakenhaug. I think Hartley's going to get the run here, guys, on the asphalt, down the main straightaway. He's going to have to send it as we take cross flags, but he does not. He breaks early. Into turn one. Oakenhaug runs it wide nearly, but they both do. As 
As this battle has been getting crazy, these two did get into it a little bit at Barcelona, so it's been kind of keeping that in the back of my mind. Because they've been playing pretty nice here so far. These two, I will always reference in 2020A Sonoma, my final race. But I watched these guys come together for a championship, and it was it was harder than any of us had driven for a championship before. So it was undescribable how intense that was. So we'll see if Hartley can catch back up to the Norwegian. But Daniel Aish, he has a joker left, which might not help him obviously keep this battle, but he is in his own battle here with Schofield for the transfer. Yes, Schofield is about three seconds back, so I think he's at... Aish is out cleared of Schofield, so he doesn't have to worry unless he does make a mistake. So let's just kind of keep an eye on that. I don't think it'll be much of an issue, but we'll We'll find out here at the end of the race. Three laps to go for Okenhaug ahead of Hartley. Okenhaug, will he run the same line? No. So it might only be Robbie Larill because even his teammate Ace does not run that line. And I'll be curious to see through the feature race if the lines are going to vary or vary a little bit and if Larill uh, gains time or loses time there. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a kind of a key factor. And if... Who knows, if he starts doing it and he starts gaining, I wonder if other people like Ray or Matt or even Luke Krause would kind of pick up on it and try it and see if it'll work for them. Dan Aish has not jokered yet in the 33. That might be hindering him with his transfer spot. Two laps to go for Okenhaug. Late on the brakes, both of them. He runs it wide. Hartley has the opportunity now. He was really late on the brakes in the 48. Really squirrely through the turns two and three chicane. But he does the same thing he did before and he runs it wide. As Schofield was able to start catching up on Ace here. So he's reeled him back in. He's kept that distance about the same from what he is to the leaders, but it seems like Aish is backed up to him, so actually it may get close here now. As I am awaiting a crazy battle for this win in the semifinal, and granted, that win means nothing. You do get a bonus point, if I'm not mistaken, but um, it really doesn't matter in the scheme of things. Maybe you get one better grid spot. It's not like front row versus back row. White flag for Ogenhaug ahead of Hartley. Aish still has to take his final bit of strategy. He's the only one left with a card to play. As Schofield ran a 55-7 to a 56-5. Hartley really deep to the chicane. He sneaks to the inside of Okenhaug. He tried to make something happen, but he couldn't do that. Okenhaug ran it through the corner very neatly. Hartley got on the binders to avoid hitting him. Yeah, and I thought both of those guys are gonna end up going around up the hill for the final time in semifinal A. Okenhaug, Hartley, Aish, and Schofield's there, so I hate to say this for any Aish fans, but I don't think he's going to be making the show tonight, as we're going to take a look when he jokers in the 33. Trying so hard to power his way through the joker, but it's smooth sailing for Schofield. Okenhaug's going to win semifinal A. Hartley gave him a good fight. And Schofield sneaks the transfer away from Aish. Seating in 13th will be Aish. 15th, Fleming. 17th, Drake Burgoon. 19th, Victor Aldrich here in semifinal A. As, as that was a pretty good battle for the lead and then for the final transfer spot. I have to give credit to those guys for putting on a good show for us. So we're here for a semifinal two. Got our former producer, Victor Valleys, hanging out in the chat with us as well with Greco. So thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. As Cryer, Ray Kingsbury, Big Dog Kieran Forrest, Andrew Howe, Justin Robichaux, James Watson, Nick Simone, and Jason Hook. Our final heat race of the night, semifinal B, uh, before we get through warm-up and through the feature race here in Great Britain. We expect Kingsbury to be fast. We know Cryer's fast. It's going to be a tough one to predict. Over eight laps here in Great Britain. Green flag. Kingsbury sleeping on the start. Forrest looks to the inside. Howell looks to the outside. It's going to be three wide down to turn one, maybe for a moment. 
Forrest thought better of it. Down to turn one. Cryer runs it wide. Kingsbury sneaks to the inside. Contact with Kingsbury and Cryer. And Forrest sneaks through to the lead as Howell and Hook pound the iDrive Sim car, their teammate of Bodie Cryer. Kingsbury gets turned off the front bumper of Nick Simone, but it was kind of self-inflicted as he got together with Robichaux. But over the jump, hold your, well, say your bias here for a minute. Kieran Forrest leads. This Kieran Forrest was able to just, kind of like we were talking about earlier, sticking to the inside there, letting everyone wash out, and then getting the run underneath them and letting everyone else's kind of bang doors is, unfortunately, Ray Kingsbury was the, got the short end of the stick on that one as he got turned there coming through the chicane. At the end of the first lap, Kieran Forrest in the Ford Fiesta leads ahead of Jason Hook and Bodie Cryer. Forrest had a great run through turn one and took the lead and is running away with this lead. Of course, still a long way to go. Andrew Howell, Justin Robichaux, Nick Simone, and Ray Kingsbury, the remaining running order. You notice the graphic there that will light up with one or two jokers. So we'll keep an eye on strategy. But I can't get over that start for the 44. And also, our P2 driver, Jason Hook, he was the last car on the grid and is sitting in second now. So amazing start by him as well. Yeah, and really, I mean, these starts have come down to whoever is the most patient. And, you know, I mean, you, there's a lot of mistakes to be had in turn one. Hook Joker's in the 137. So we will see where he comes out in relation to the other strategery moves. And yes, I said that. Boards are hard. As he comes Cryer out. gets around. Him. Cryer, but Cryer takes the spot. Howell comes out behind Robichaux, so Howell is the first man with his strategy completed in the triple six. As sitting at the moment, we do have a decent gap from our top three transfer drivers to Robichaux sitting in P4, but like you said, Howell did take both Joker, so that will gain him about two to three seconds, roughly, depending on how these guys take the Jokers, so we'll kind of have to watch the rest of the race to see how it all pans out. As remember, our race brought to you by Sim Racer Coin, the cryptocurrency made by Sim Racers for Sim Racers. And these specific eight Sim Racers are racing to own the winner's coin tonight. Check out their platform mission and vision, simracercoin.org, for all of that information. Thank you, Miguel Gomez, for your continued support of North American Simulated Auto Racing. As we have Bodie Cryer in the Joker along with Karen Forrest, they take their first bit of strategy. Hook completes his. Robichaux completes his. Cryer. Was it, that was his first joker, I apologize, I just said that. Nick Simone has completed his strategy and James Watson has completed his strategy. So let's see, Hook runs it wide to get a better wider entry through turn one ahead of Cryer, the teammates battling. Cryer runs it wide. I don't think battling like this is a good idea, Cody. No, because that's just gonna back them up to Andrew Howell who does have his joker completed. So the one that hurts the worst will be Cryer because he still has one joker left. So if Howell gets too close to them, Howell may overtake him. And the only issue with having, I forget, I think they have six cars, is that some of your guys are going to miss this feature race. Some of your guys are going to be battling each other, and it's going to be intra-team battles. Forrest and Cryer will complete their strategies. Let's see where Cryer will come out. In relation to his satellite teammates, Hook easily gets by him, and so does Howell. So we put Cryer from second to fourth. Yeah, as, as Hook just trying to make that move and uh, Cryer putting the defense on, just slowed him down just a little bit as, yeah, he ran a 59-second lap time with that Joker. So that's about two seconds slower than we've been seeing out of the regular Joker laps. Cross flags for semifinal B, Kieran Forrest, Jason Hook, Andrew Howell, the running order for the transfer. Cryer snuck to the inside. I think he's quicker than Andrew Howell, but we'll have to see here when the lap times rotate. Looks like Forrest ran it wide up the hill. I'm going to take a look. He ran it a little bit wide, missed the apex. Still has three and a half laps to hold this lead. As Robo shows latched onto the back bumper of Cryer here. So now Cryer has to worry about trying to chase down the guys in front of him without having the 93 of Robo show chase him down and try to pass him. And the French-Canadian Justin Robichaux, we know how quick he is becoming. Very determined to gain speed for Dirt Esport, and Dirt Esport trying to gain a bunch of speed as well as a team. You remember they made their debut a couple seasons ago here in the NASA Rallycross Challenge. Three laps to go. 
Cryer losing ground as I say that. Howell runs it wide, or does he? He runs that line that his teammate did. Robichaud nearly hits Cryer in the 0 5. Yes, and I notice a couple guys are not doing the full extent of what uh, Robbie was doing, where he was going all the way out to the gravel out there. But he, I noticed a couple guys, the groove, the main groove has slid out a little bit, and they're sliding out just to get that fresh dirt to get the drive off the corner. Two to go for Forrest. We're not missing anything up front, but Hook is catching Forrest at an alarming rate, six tenths of a second faster than the Ford was the Subaru of Hook. And we look at the transfer positions. Third is Howell, 55.9, 56.2 for Cryer, 56.7 for Robichaud. So Howell just has to focus on maintaining the third spot. But Kieran Forrest, what is happening to him? He was three tenths down on Hook that last lap. Yeah, I think I think Hook's just got a couple little spots in the track where he's able to kind of gain a bit more grip and get a better drive off off the corner. As Forrest here, just having a. It doesn't seem like the car wants to rotate as well either, so I wonder if that's part of the problem. Or he could be doing the old Dylan Livigood trick and just kind of backing it up a little bit to make things interesting. As that's also true. As we take a look at Nick Simone in the 99 off track, both the Team Watson racing cars, 7th and 8th, uh, both newcomers, relatively speaking, to James Watson. He ran last season, but Nick Simone, a newcomer uh, to Rallycross, I do believe. So uh, Team Watson racing up in the, the back of the field, still determined as ever to have some fun, so it's good to see them here. And Kieran Forrest was a tenth up on hook that last lap. Yeah, it seems like Kieran's a little bit better on the asphalt with that Ford, and the Subarus are a little bit better on the dirt, so it kind of equals itself out, and depending on who has a better part of the track is where it's going to show. As, ooh, Hook throws it in deep there and gets right to the back bumper. He says, sorry, mate, on chat. I don't think he was planning on getting that close, but it was a clean maneuver. He tried to sneak in there, and I can agree on the Ford being grippier on asphalt. I do recall uh, it being much more responsive. I feel like that's probably the short wheelbase, but uh, story time, a little bit too late. Kieran Forrest off the final corner. He will win semifinal B. Hook will come in second, and Howell will be the 12th seed in Britain, 14th for Cryer, 16th for Robichaud. 18th for Kingsbury, what could have been, 20th for Nick Simone, and 21st for James Watson. As we have a couple minutes before the feature race for warm up, I won't be completely away. I'm going to uh, mute for a little bit. If Cody Erdman, you want to bring in some Twitch chat, and uh, Dylan Livingard, I think, will be here. We'll figure it out. Yeah. As Kieran Force is having fun doing a little couple donuts here. It's been a had a good run there for sequential sim supporters. I try not to be too utter, utterly biased. It also seems like our sequential cars have not wanted to turn lately, so we'll have to figure that one out. So, Dylan, first night here here in Brands Hatch, what have you been thinking so far of the racing? Uh, it's been some pretty exciting racing. It's uh, cool to see the innovation on the lines and. Uh, guys getting creative, and for the most part, everyone racing each other clean and when, with uh, lots of respect, so kudos to all the drivers there. It's always cool when you can put on a good show and keep it clean. Uh, as Josh did lie, there's a trackside hot dog that has my name on it, so... Oh, that's totally fine. Thanks. Cody, I'm going to end up abandoning you here for a little bit, but I will return. That's I will. I'll kind of watch warm up here a little bit. Just kind of see who we're watching, what we're watching at the moment. We got step away for just a quick moment. I'm not going to step away for a trackside hot dog. I have to go get something to drink, so I'll be right back. Yeah, as I, I killed off my milkshake I got from the lovely vendors. So unfortunately, mine's gone there. So as we got guys warming up here for the final, just making a couple setup tweaks, trying to figure out where they want is. I believe that is Josh Clogg there sending it deep in the Joker, trying to find his limits. So we're watching Harberts, and I believe that would be, uh, yeah, Clogg and Lorill, I believe that would be. So we got these three guys out there in practice trying to just find a little bit of speed. Let's see if they got anything for Luke Krause and Robbie Lorill. I'm still surprised with that line that he's running. I'm kind of curious if he'll run it in the final. 
if anyone if we want to as you can see here a couple guys in the practice here were doing the same thing so i wonder if they have something up their sleeve that not a lot of people know about as we ride on board here with robbie Lorel. Using up both curbs there through the chicane, keeping it nice and tight through here. Putting that right front right on the clip the dirt here. Come down the front straightaway here at Brands Hatch. Into the first corner here. Got a little bit of a bump there, upsets the car, so you gotta watch out too hard you throw it into the chicane here. Use all the blue turtles here. Getting nice and tight up against with Harvard's here as I'm probably behind actually now that I think about it because I've been watching the twitch stream so that probably made like half no sense as now I'm on the correct screen I'm supposed to be as I got like five screens open here so as we are looking at I believe Robbie here still putting in some more practice Here's triple six of Andrew Howell here. Man, a couple laps of running real wide out here. I've noticed some people, if you get a real good run, you can swing it out wide. Otherwise, you want to keep it nice and tidy through there. Keep it the shortest line around. Is just out of curiosity what our practice times are looking like. If that isn't any indication here. Is Robbie Larilla is sitting P1 in, in our warm up. Matt Kingsbury, Harberts, Oakenhaug, and Clogger running our top five. As I have, uh, I have returned as we get ready for this feature yeah. race here in Great Britain. As you totally missed my lovely, I was trying to do an on track commentating for it and then realized I was on the Twitch ch chat. So then oh, I was, I was delayed. I was like, oh, no, yep, dopes. I've done that one before. Yeah. That's uh, unfortunately kind of as, hilarious, but also as, kind of. As to one of our former drivers, Marwan, being an Egyptian, we do have someone, uh, Alex AWY -A is from Alexandria, Egypt. So we got Egypt in the chat. Glad to have you with us here tonight. As I am taking a look through here, the um, the grid, I'm seeing if any sportsman driver. So sportsman driver, Kieran Forrest is not. Howell is. But who do we have in this feature race? No Feldman, no Ramsey, no Robichaux, no Rawls. Honestly, I don't think there are any sportsman cup drivers Besides Howell? In or, this... I don't think... Did Howell make the feature? Yes. He's, he's 12th. So, we didn't make that big of a, a deal about it here on iRacing as we used to class it as separate championships. So, if you're the type of person that still considers the Sportsman Cup its own thing, I guess you could say that uh, Howell wins by default. But yes. as we get ready... For round number 199 of the championship overall, that's a good number to be paired with Nitro Circus. And the third round of the, what is it, 24th season, wow, that's crazy to say, of the Sim Racer Coin NASA Rally Cross Challenge. The cryptocurrency made by Sim Racers for Sim Racers and our 12 Sim Racers will race to own the winner's coin tonight. Glad you can join us here on Nitro Circus Twitch, powered by the Automotive Sports Network. Josh Mertz, Cody Erdman, Dylan Living going to the commentary cube. Zach Johnson in the production truck. Luke Krause, defending champion and points leader on pole position. Robbie Larill, Josh Clogg, Matt Kingsbury, Jacob Harberts, Adam Thomas, Magnus Oakenhound, Kieran Forrest, Matt Hartley, Jason Hook, David Schofield, Andrew Howell. That is our running order, or sorry, our grid, as we get ready for Great Britain. 
12 cars, 10 laps, green flag in Great Britain and off the line. Better start for Krauss in the first phase. Larill down to turn number one. Will they battle side by side into the corner? Larill on the outside and he takes the spot ahead of the former chair, the defending champion. Clark gets closed up by Kingsbury. Hartley's around up the front bumper of it. Looked like it was Jacob Harvard's. Caught in the middle of that is Kieran Forrest and Hartley's not happy over the radio. Larill takes the jump and leads. Kieran Forrest is apologizing for that conduct. I'm not sure why, but I didn't really pay attention. Andrew Howell in the triple six. I think he got a slowdown. He's way back in the field. Side by side, Harberts with Thomas. Harberts gets a better run. We'll see the first Jokers on the first lap. Larill, no. Nobody Jokers out of the top five. Harberts, who Jokers? Hartley does in the 48. He does something different. So does Thomas in the 625. So does Howell and so does Forrest. But at the end of the first lap, I didn't expect this. Robbie Larill is leading. And I don't know if you noticed through the first dirt hairpin, he still used his move with everyone right behind him. And it seemed to work. I don't know where he found this. I don't know if it was by mistake in one of his 3 a.m. practices or what it was, but it seems to work very well as he throws and it so in. So does deep. Krause tries it. Krause tries it. Clog does not. But what's interesting is because they're so deep in the corner, they can get so much more momentum on corner exit. So this is going to be interesting as Kraus is not letting him get away. So car number one, championship leader with the red plate. If you're new to an NASA Rallycross, think of Supercross with that red plate as well. And Robbie Larill, lightning start. But I think Luke Kraus, this is going to be a great battle for the win. I totally agree. As, as Robbie had a great start to get around the outside of him that set him up on the inside of the beginning of that hairpin. And once you get to that hairpin, it turns into a massive funnel as he keeps it super tight. As Luke Krause has to jump on the brakes, otherwise he's going to turn him there. We ride on board with Robbie Larill in the 213 for DNF Auto Care. Luke Kraus way deep in turn four. Larill defending. Last lap time was a 55.157 for Larill, 54.823. And I think Larill knows, not bashing him, I think he knows that Luke might be a little bit faster than him, so he has to defend for all he's worth. Yeah, you don't want to give up that inside, especially through that corner. If you leave that thing wide open, Luke is just going to throw it on the inside. As he goes, speaking of throwing it on the inside, he goes into the Joker here. Luke pulls the pin to the grenade. He is holding the strategy cards. He jokers on the first opportunity. And that's the problem when you're leading. If you know that you're not as fast as the guy behind you, you can't pull the strategy because you give the clean track, all that stuff that we've talked about. Luke Krause comes out ahead of his teammate, Josh Clogg. And I know there's no team orders, but I think that Clogg is not going to push his teammate too hard. No, as he knows that Krause has that just tiny bit of more pace than himself. And Clog is still sitting in the third step of the podium, so that'll be a great day for Fiercely Forward as a team as they're trying to win that team championship that was oh so close to them last season. As Okenhaug jokered, Kingsbury in the 21. I'm not sure what happened. If we can take a look or keep an eye on um, the main footage here. Oh, Matt ran it way wide in the final corner. That's what lost him time, so... He is on the back foot because he has not jokered at all until now. But now Magnus is way ahead and the top three exit the Joker. So crucially, Luke Krause's strategy is done in car number one as we take the fifth lap beginning our halfway mark. And Robbie Larill still has a strategy bit left. If I was Larill, I would joker immediately in this instance because you want to get out ahead of your rival and then hold him up. Yeah, and Josh, I have to agree with you on that one. As Larill way out wide, once again running the cushion, we see how much of an advantage he gets out of that corner. And it's happened once or twice to one of us. I can't remember over these last nine years and 199 races. But certainly, I think that this is a crucial race deciding moment for Robbie Larill in the 213. Does he joker? Yes! He jokers in the 213. Luke Krause in car number one, defending champion. On the asphalt, better run. It's gonna be close, but Larill has to get over the jumps and Kraus to the lead. As now let's see if he's Robbie's able to use that special line of his as receiving a reel him in is also the third step on the podium. They both still have a Joker left between Clog and Okenhog. So and then Larill hits the wall. 
I Rez. think the pressure's gotten yep. to him. So now, I think it might be a battle for second between Clog and Lorel for Fiercely Forward to get a 1-2 finish here. But we'll have to see. As those two still... Actually, everyone has jokered up to Harbert. Harbert still has one left. And Schofield has one left. And what could have been for Robbie Larill, But it's happened to me, especially on the iRacing platform. You know you're not as fast as the guy chasing you. You're worried about him behind you. And then you lose all the speed that you had. It was an electric start for Larill, though. Yeah, as well. yeah, and I think all of us have won and lost races like that, Josh. I know, I definitely did in Germany. Larill way wide in the 213. Adding insult to injury. Clog in the 199, closing up. This is getting closer to being a fiercely forward 1-2, but Magnus wants to sneak onto the podium. So Kraus loves this. Way out wide is Larill. Clog's not going to run that line, but Kraus, 54.9. Larill, 56.4, just to put it in perspective. So either there's damage or Larill has over overran his stuff here. And we're coming to three laps to go. Is the place I honestly wouldn't want to be is almost in clogged shoes because you you're worried about the car in front of you so you're trying to chase him down but you also have to play defense with Okanagan being right on your back bumper so you're kind of you get caught up looking and trying to look out your windshield and the mirror at the same time I'll put it to you this way 55 I think it was a zero 55 I just had that lap time 55 point 036, there we go, I know how to read. To a 55.035 for Okenhaug. They were on top of each other, equal lap time. Laril wide in the hairpin. When he gets that beautiful run off and is able to pull two, three car lengths when there isn't anyone around him. Although he runs it wide there. That, the 199 hooked up almost like an open wheel car on that dirt. And what's interesting is that's not dirt that's on asphalt. That's dirt that's on grass. Unless the dirt rubbers up. I don't think it does. I could be horribly off base there. You're not missing anything up front. Luke Krause, defending champion, way out ahead of the rest of the field. Two laps to go for the Canadian, trying to get another win in the NASA Rallycross Challenge. And if I'm not mistaken, I do have the memory of a goldfish, but he did win last Ooh. week in oh, no. contact with Clog and Larill and Okenhaug's gonna benefit from this. And Clog does not into the wall, into the tires. He may have wheel damage from all he that. He does, that car is junk, it looks like. Because it does not seem to want to drive straight. So that puts Okenhaug in P3 as puts Robbie the rail P2 and I wonder if he may have damage from that too so it may help out Magnus here and I was just about to say what I was saying was Luke Kraus won last week so he's trying to make it two race wins in a row he's gonna have one lap to do it and I'm taking a look off monitors I was too busy reading stats to check that wreck but it looked like oh Clog just had to get something done deep 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 on the brakes and they just came together as he's back Clog is starting to back up to the the second pack here, Matt Hartley's leading it with Adam Thomas, Jacob Kingsbury, Harbert. Kingsbury, I have to correct you. Oh, yeah, sorry, Kingsbury, my bad. And Kieran Forrest and Hook. Oh, Hook around! Oh, get Hook around for the podium place! What happened to the Norwegian? What is going on in Great Britain, first of all? Yeah, and he had to let all those cars by. Oh, and Matt Kingsbury gets caught in the tires. Oakenhaug hit the wall, Kingsbury into the tires. What is going on for the podium? It's right back to where it was. And it's back to Clog, who's been limping it around with tire damage. He had around a one minute lap time that last lap. Final corner, defending champion Kraus is gonna maintain that red plate and hold the points lead and gain points. He wins in Great Britain ahead of Robbie Larill, who came oh so close after a great start. He will finish in second here in Great Britain after plowing into the wall. And Josh Clogg brings his wounded car home in third. Thomas in fourth. Best finish for him, I think, since he won in Crandon. And Kieran Forrest was able just to get around Jacob Harbert's coming to the line there for P5. So another just photo about to, finish. I feel like I got really crossed up. Forrest Harbert's hook. Okenhaug, Schofield, Matt Kingsbury, and Matt Hart. Wow! 
That might have been a little bit of a procession in the middle, dare I say it. But that really got spicy at the end. Yeah, that was just utter chaos as Slipstream in the chat said. And nobody wanted that podium, or at least that third step. I don't know if, if there was some... A, they were warned of a ghost on the third step of the podium, so nobody wanted it or what was going on. But whoever was in that third spot in the last couple laps there was just utter chaos. Yeah, and it all, you know, it comes down to it not being over till it's over, for sure. Totally agree. As, yes. as we saw Kieran, he just drove through like around like three cars the last couple laps to go from having that early, early first lap wreck to all the way up to top five finish. As I'm going to try and pull in our podium finishers here, we're going to try and get uh, the two fiercely forward cars. But uh, while we wait for him, we're going to bring in Robbie Larill. One of you guys can have this interview because oh. I don't have any words. I'll, but uh, I'll as we wait for that. first and third, we have a chat with second place. Hey there, Robbie. Amazing start by you. What were you thinking when you saw that fresh open track out there after turn one? Uh, adrenaline. <laughs> okay, so we were making mention of it a little bit throughout the broadcast. Where did you find that line through the dirt hairpin over that came to the uh, metal jump? Because you and it seemed like Harberts were the only two really running it, and you were making it work very well. Well, I found that line whenever I did the... Um... The um, well, what is it? The the invitationals, direct okay. invitationals. That's when I found that line there. And actually, I did it first, and then a few guys had figured it out. And then they started blowing my times out the water. But yeah, I, I'd found that going outside of there and using that sand trap. Normal will go a little farther into the sand trap, but they said we got to try to keep at least one tire on the racing surface. So it was borderline a couple times. But yeah, I think you use a lot better if you go fully into the sand trap. Yeah, as you were fully send it in there and then it did seem like Luke Krause kind of picked up on that so then you, you kind of had to put it in defense mode there but amazing driving by you to be able to get that P2 on the podium as who would you like to thank to help you get there? I'd like to thank DGR, DNF Auto uh, I Drive Sim and I'd like to thank y'all like I said this is the reason why I like y'all commentating it's the best Thank you. We we greatly appreciate it. We'll They're making forward. me all warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I do to people. And then yeah. I crush their dreams. Yeah, and then you're gonna go <laughs> practice at three thirty one in the morning. Uh, yeah. Great, great run, my friend. Uh it's kind of a shame it didn't work out, but it's also kind of uh Everything happens for a reason because you wadded it up and still managed to get second. So uh good run and we will see you uh next race in Sonoma. Uh thank you. I'll see you all there. As um, I don't know if we're getting the top two in here or not, but uh, I guess I'll get some final thoughts before we get those interviews. So, uh, Dylan Livingood, uh, what do you think about tonight's race? You know, definitely lived up to the hype. Uh, definitely had the strategy that the drivers had to figure out and and all that. And really physical turn one, both on the starts and uh, as we saw a couple of times during the race. Um, kind of tricky for some of the drivers. So. Overall, I was satisfied with it. And Cody? Yeah, it was a really good race. I was kind of curious on what Luke Krause was able to do, and he showed why he does have that number one plate and the red plate as well on his car with him holding up to the pressure, and he was able to kind of put a stamp on getting two wins to the season here already as he took him all season to get the, that first one at the end. So... Getting two wins here, kind of setting himself as looking like possibly the title favorite. But Robbie looked strong tonight. Magnus looked really strong as he almost had two podiums in a row. So he's another possibility. And unfortunately, Matt Hartley had some struggles tonight. I know he's another one. And Adam Thomas as well. He looked to have some good speed out of him. So once we get through the season here, we'll go to Sonoma and see how the whole field ranks up when we go out there and hopefully we don't send any cars to the moon like we did last time as um we will bring in our third place man josh clog and uh i'll take luke kraus if we end up getting his interview so uh, i think dylan living good this is your turn for our third place driver 
Uh, hey, Josh. I really don't know what to ask you right now. I was not expecting to get uh, thrown on the spot. Cody, you got anything for him? So, I'm, I'll throw one here. Um, unfortunately, you got that crazy damage. Were you expecting to fall out of the podium, or were you, like, praying to the racing gods that you would end up there because you did? I was not expecting it, that's for sure. Um, I wasn't sure what was going on with Robbie. He was breaking, to like, like, maybe 50 meters earlier than um, what I'm used to, so I didn't know if he was serving a slowdown or something like that. Um, but then once we entered the corner, I saw that he wasn't, and that was a little too late to, to stop uh, turning in there. So sorry to him, um, but uh, somehow ended up second and third still, so no complaints. Yeah, as you and your teammate got some great points there for Fiercely Forward and was able to help out in the, the team battles. You guys were, unfortunately, I think only like a point short or something. So trying to really redeem your, yourselves and as Luke is looking like a good title favorite here. So you had a, you had great speed and everything. Uh, Who would you like to thank and putting you P3 on the podium? I definitely want to thank Luke for the help. Yeah, he's... Uh... Always a solid contender and a uh, great help to to gain some time. Uh, so him especially, all the four, fiercely forward crew, uh, everybody involved, much appreciated. Thank you extremely much, and we'll see you. I believe you're running IndyCar as well, so we'll see you next week at Texas, or also we'll see you here when we run Sonoma in a couple of weeks. Indeed, sounds good. Thanks, guys. As a uh... Infamously, I don't think we're going to get our race winner tonight. He's very sporadic with uh, what he wants to do. I have the memory of a goldfish. I know Dylan went over his final thought. Cody, did I get yours? Yes, I was just right when we got Josh, so I just ended up. Also, I kind of just out of curiosity, I asked our P5 finisher, Kieran Force, if that was his first top five, and it was not. It was his second, so congratulations on your second top five. Big dog, Kieran Force. As a couple programming notes for Nitro Circus Twitch, it's actually going to be a bit quiet for the rest of the week. The Sports Car Championship is off on Thursday. The Championship Series is off on Wednesday. Rallycross is going to be off for the next two weeks. So our next show will be September 1st for the RK Designs Championship Series, NASA Championship Series, uh, presented by Penguin RC and Nitro Circus. We have two races at Texas. You'll have Zach Johnson in the production truck, Chad Irvine, and I think Dylan Livingood once again uh, in the commentary queue, but we'll have to figure that one out. And then the next day after that, we go to Circuit of the Americas for the Sports Car Championship. As Rallycross, for the first time ever, we have two weeks off until we go to Sonoma to begin the, wow, the third century of Rallycross races as we kick off race 200. And I'll remember round 100 when we ran eight cars and we had a bunch of throwback cars. And that was that was a good time. But for all of us here at Nitro Circus, North American Simulated Auto Racing, and the Auto Into Sports Network, on behalf of our partners, iDrive Sim Training, DNF Auto Care, Sim Racer Coin, Nitro Circus, I'm running out of partners that we have, powered by Nitro, uh, um, Major's Garage, I should say, uh, set up shop for iRacing. If I missed anybody, I do apologize. Ray Kingsbury, Brandon Lambert, Kieran Forrest, all of the leadership team at uh, NASA Sim Racing. We will see you, at a minimum, next week in Texas for the championship series, but we hope you enjoyed today's coverage of the Rallycross Challenge on Nitro Circus Twitch and the Automotive Sports Network On Demand. But yeah, for all of us, it's been a crazy race. We'll see you soon. But until then, so long, everyone.